All right, guys, I think we're just about ready to get started here. Um, first off, thanks so much for being here for our eighth episode of Line Change with Coach Thomas. Uh, we know that there's a lot of other stuff going on tonight um, with the uh, Making Swirls Club, so we appreciate you, your guys' uh, dedication to being here tonight. Um, our guests uh, last week, we had uh, Danny Caesar and Marcus Ortiz. They uh, did a good job. I hope you guys who were here last week enjoyed meeting them. Um, they uh, had a pretty emotional homecoming up in Knoxville this past weekend. They, they went back to play in that building where they played a long time for years, and they both played very well on Saturday night. Um, our guests this week are uh, Chris Stapps, Bazovic, and Jarrett Cup. Let's hear a round of applause for these two guys. We're going to get to them in a little bit. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, uh, the way we structure the show is uh, I'm going to ask Coach a few questions. I'm going to get to the players after that, and then I'll open the floor up for discussion, questions, comments, concerns, complaints from you guys. We've got a, a mic down here that uh, we'll have DJ here pass around, and you guys uh, feel free to ask any question your heart desires, and then we'll recap uh, the show and uh, preview the upcoming weekend. So, um, Coach, I want to uh, address the past weekend. It was a huge, uh, immensely important couple of games against Knoxville. Um, home ice advantage in the first round was on the line this past weekend when you guys played against the Ice Bears, and the team played accordingly. It took all four points, left, nothing, or left everything out on the ice, left Knoxville with zero points. Um, summarize what you saw from the team this weekend and what you took away from the home and home series. Yeah, I know definitely it was a great weekend that, uh, that we needed. Um, obviously those points were huge um, for this playoff push here. And, um, just thought the guys overall just played a great game. You know, there's a few, few things defensively and stuff like that we, that we need to clean up. But I thought for, um, for a full 60 minutes, we played pretty well both games. Yeah, and Saturday night, um, the offense just exploded. You guys scored six goals. Um, there have been a lot of moving pieces, players coming and going over the past couple of months. Um, did you feel that that was a, a long time coming, that it was only a matter of time before we had an offensive explosion like we did on Saturday night? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, with the new guys, like you said, it's, it's pretty hard bringing new guys in all the time because then you're shuffling lines. You know, guys getting used to one, one line mate and then next practice or... Or next game, he's with two different guys. So, right. Um, I knew it was a matter of time, though, with the, with the guys that we brought in, Caesars, or teasing these guys, and um, it's just a matter of time for lines to start clicking. And you know, a guy like Caesar getting two points, and he's a plus four. Um, so it's just I, I knew it was a matter of time, and it's good that it's happening now, and that we have um, two more uh, warm up games uh, for playoffs. Yeah, not just the attacking game, but I thought the uh, the team played very well defensively on Saturday as well. The decor looked different on Saturday, um, obviously with Chris Stapps returning from injury and uh, a new player making his debut, David Robertson. How did you feel David did? He was a plus two, had an assist. Um, how did you think he meshed with the decor on Saturday night? Yeah, I mean, that, that was, um, it was tough for him too because his first pro game, he's playing in a small building like Knoxville. Right. So, um, but I thought he played well. He kept kept things simple. He's a big body. Um, you know, he's not there to be rushing the puck and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. um, he kept it simple. And, and as a defenseman, sometimes you got to do that. You know, you just got to keep stuff simple, distribute the pucks, and um, good things happen. So I thought he, he did that, and, and it worked out good for us and, and for himself. So Chris Stapps, you made your uh, long-anticipated return to action on Saturday night. Um, you had missed six games before that. It was really the only time you had missed all season for the most part until Saturday. How did it feel to uh, get your legs under you again and get back on the ice? Awesome. I couldn't wait for it. Um, as uh, you mentioned before, we made some uh, moves and the team we have, I, I couldn't wait to get back out there. One question I have to ask you, because you're going up to Peoria this weekend, obviously you're going to play again, and one of their top defensemen, Ralph Grinberg, he's from Latvia, he's from your hometown. Um, what is your, did you guys play together growing up? Do you have any sort of a rapport or relationship with, with Ralph's? Um, played together on a few teams, but he's actually from another city. Where I, not not, Re, from, so my, not, suburb from, not from hometown from uh, Liepaja. It's like okay. 150 kilometers away. So it's pretty far distance for Latvia. So we played against growing up. And he's also one year younger than mm -hmm. me. But I, I know him. I know hockey world is so small, especially back home, that everyone knows everyone. Well, elite prospect strikes again. There you go. Yeah. Well, you guys, you guys played together in <laughs> Mississippi. We played in too, Mississippi. Right? So yeah, that's right. That, that yeah. was the first time we actually were on the team together. Okay. okay. We played together with... Uh, 
in national team a little bit, but not a full season. Is there a little added fuel to the, to the fire going up to play against somebody that you used to be uh, pretty good friends with and teammates with in Mississippi? For sure. Always. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Jarrett, the next question I'm going to address to you. Um, so you had two assists on Saturday night. Uh, you had a really strong game. Um, you've been sort of an iron man on the blue line this season. You've played more games than any other defenseman on the Mayhem. Um, you've played in all but one game. Uh, so you've seen a lot of the turnover. You've seen a lot of players coming and going. Um, how did it feel to you to be um, such an integral piece in that game on Saturday, and not only that, but to also help in some of these new players get on the score sheet like uh, Sean Lynch and, and Danny Caesar with that assist. Um, yeah, you know, it's huge being a part of every game that we've had so far this year. <clears throat> um, you know, and having, like you said, those new guys come in and out all the time, I think one big thing that the decor has is that, you know, we're all pretty tight. We're all, you know, kind of in our first one or two years. And so I think the the group of us has been able to, you know, help each other out in that aspect. And, um, you know, just for the younger guys and, you know, that game in Knoxville, you know, those are, the games are coming down to, you know, one or two goals, you know, most nights, you know, it's all playoff hockey from here on out. And um, the four points we got from Knoxville were huge because, you know, we're chasing them right now. And especially with Danny and Marcus returning, uh, we wanted to be big for them. And it was nice to get the win both nights. Absolutely. And not only getting the win, but doing so in regulation puts the mayhem just two points behind Knoxville in the standings, which means they're in control of their own destiny for the most part. The only thing they won't be able to help is if Knoxville wins both of their games. Otherwise, the mayhem have a chance to seal up that uh, highly coveted home ice advantage in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, Cupper, last question for you here. Uh, you had your 26th birthday on Sunday. Do you any, do anything special for it? Uh, we just got together. Some of us went out for dinner, and mm -hmm. then we had some cake, and that was pretty well it. <laughs> huh. That's yeah. Well, where's Travis? We should get him a piece of cake. Where did he go? Oh. Do you know where Travis went? Yeah. Oh. Okay. When he gets back, tell him, tell him Cupper needs a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I've got one last question, then we'll open the floor for discussion. Um, you guys, both you, Chris Dapps, Jarrett, you guys are the top scoring defensemen on the Mayhem this season. Uh, you've both played that style for most of your career, that sort of uh, puck moving defenseman. Um, what's most enticing to you about that role of being the last line of defense while at the same time, you know, contributing offensively and helping the team score? You can go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what I would say to that is that it's just exciting to be in both ends, to be honest. Like, uh, if you score a big goal or make a play that's going to turn into a goal, um, it's always exciting to be a part of it. And sometimes those happen in your own end, you know, it's stepping up on a guy or just uh, intercepting a pass of some sorts, whatever it may be. Um, you know, that might be the play that ultimately leads to you guys going down and scoring. So um, it's just exciting to be part of both uh, parts. Yeah, I feel like it's a lot of like playing center in a way because mm -hmm. you're on both sides of the ice and you kind of con can't control the game more than if you're a wing, for example. And yeah, it's exciting for sure. I wouldn't want to play other position. <laughs> have you? I have. Yeah, wasn't as fun. Played shutdown D, played center, played wing. Haven't played goalie though. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, that's all the questions I've got. Um, the floor is now yours. We're, uh, the only thing we ask is that you please do, if you have a question, please answer, ask it into the microphone so that we can get it all recorded for our archived version on YouTube. Go ahead, DJ. Appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, it sounds Might long. be a little tangled. Okay, this question is for Chris Stapps. You were in Mississippi before, and as we're all aware, there is no Mississippi team at the current, at the present. Um, what, <laughs> I guess, when were you notified of that? What were your thoughts? Um, you know, did you plan on going back this year? What, what was going on in your head from your experience with that? Um, that was, uh, we were all surprised, at least the players I talked to, because the season was over, we went home, and I think it was a week or two weeks after the season ended, it was announced that River Kings won't, won't be playing this year again. And of course it's sad, but that's life. It's 
ho part of the business. It's hockey. Those things happen, and you can't really, as a player, you can't control it. But yeah, it was a nice place, but moving on. <laughs> One of the places that Chris Stapps played junior hockey at also folded, actually, in uh, the North American League, Wichita Falls. Oh, okay. That was more recent. That was a couple of years ago, I think. Mm, yeah. yeah. 2017. Wasn't, well, I wasn't there, though. Right, right. You happened, were, yeah. yeah, you were gone. Yeah. Holy. But so. yeah, that's a, you're leaving behind a bad trail, Chris Stapps. <laughs> no, only joking. Don't worry. Thank you for the question. Is it all tangled up? Okay. <laughs> all right. Twenty slaps. <laughs> uh, so my question is for Cup. Um, this entire season, I think your game has been the most interesting to watch because it's evolved a lot. In the beginning of the season, uh, you seemed more wanting to distribute the puck as soon as you carried it to the blue line. You were more looking to shoot really quick when it was in our zone or rim it around, whereas now it's like you'll join the rush, you'll carry through, you'll make moves to kind of create more offense. And that's been really enjoyable to watch. But I, I'm curious as to what have you felt has been the biggest difference that's kind of pushed that evolution and uh, your growth as a player? Um, so throughout the year, I think, like you said, um, <laughs> You know, I've started making more moves, and I think that just comes with a conf, you know, being more confident in my game. And um, you know, at the start of the year, everybody was, you know, you know, our offense was really flying. You know, like as D men, I feel like I didn't have to jump up as much or try and create as much because our forwards were doing all the work. And so, as you know, like throughout the past couple months, we've gone through a little bit of a you know sore streak and not been able to score goals. And so I think through that, it's kind of you know, allowed me to, you know, think ahead and be like, all right, I need to start joining up in the rush or creating more offense. And I think, um, yeah, just the confidence thing and being more comfortable on the ice, you know, it was my first, you know, couple months being in the league and seeing what I can do after I get comfortable. I think uh, hopefully I just go up from here. Good question. Thank you. Looks like we're almost done with the mic. Maybe one more. <laughs> one more question into this one. There's a question for the coach. In the past three or four games, you can definitely see you've changed up your style of play. Is that a conscious decision just at the end of the year? Um, I just think guys are actually working a little bit harder and things are going going well you know I haven't really changed too much changed some lines and stuff like that but um, I just think overall the guys are getting to the point where you know playoffs is around the corner and um, our, our games have to be better from here on out so um, I really haven't changed too much style wise you know what I mean so uh, I just think guys are actually getting it done and, and doing that extra extra work on the ice for the games and um, you know, it's it's showing in our game now. Every for the last four or five games now, maybe. So, um, it's always a good thing when you can watch and, and see them doing doing what they should be doing and at a high pace, because then good things happen. <laughs> Copper, it's your call. Oh, there you go. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Travis. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Right. <laughs> Where'd it go? Ah, you got it. Okay. Thanks for taking care of that, by the way, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> Going into this week's games against Peoria, what do you feel are your strong points that you're going to improve on and your weak points that you're going to work on improving? Um, I'll start with the weak points. Um, we're still giving up way too many shots, I think, in our end. Um, and a team like Peoria can, can bury if you give them those 10 to 12 high-grade, high-slot kind of shots. So 
that's something we definitely got to clean up here this last weekend. Um, pot, like, I think we definitely can skate with them. Or I think our teams, we have a lot of speed that we're showing now. And if we just continue to use that and get it on pucks harder and, um, you know, my two defensemen here that can skate too, if they push the pace up the ice as well, and um, we can do some damage. So it's, like I said earlier, it's been better the last few games. So we'll definitely continue to work on that. But I think our D zone is probably the main thing that we'd have to kind of tighten up these last two games and in playoffs. <laughs> uh, so my question is for Chris Stapps. You've played in a lot of different places. Uh, Finland, France, you played a little bit in Alaska. Um, outside of Macon, uh, what would you say is your favorite place to play? Hmm. Mm. You know, every place has its own something, but overall I'd say Texas. I had a really good experience in Wichita Falls when I was there for a year and a half. And yeah, nice. overall, over there. <laughs> They do have good billets. Yes, I, I, yeah. The <laughs> billet families there are unreal. I can confirm they that. They all have money. I, and, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Didn't you stay with the Fergusons, Chris Stapps? No, Chris, with uh, Brad Camsey. Uh, oh, okay. Even better. Right. Uh, this one's for Chris Stapps. Um, how much of a com confidence boost was the game on Sunday? Especially since you didn't. I mean, especially since you know, all, offensively, everyone was sort of contributing. Oh, for sure. Coming back and playing a solid game. It's always a it's better than just playing a solid game, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is there any chance we can get uh, Alex's intro on the pregame playlist? <laughs> 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 mm. I don't know, we'll yeah, I'll yeah, talk we'll to yeah, I'll talk to John Reagan about that one actually. Yeah, that's a good question. He's did you hear? Little... Did you hear that? Yeah. I did. Okay. <laughs> Seems like everyone, everyone in town's heard that by now. <laughs> yeah, Melissa. Um, so my question is actually for both of our players up here. Um, what, if any, sort of pregame rituals do you have? Um, for me, I. It really depends. If I play a good game the day before, then I try to do the same thing. It can. It really changes like if I if I'm playing good I stick to that what I've been doing eating the same waking up at a certain time whatever whatever I'm doing I keep doing it if I'm playing bad completely change it but the thing I do all the time is I put my left side of equipment first and then I put my right side of equipment but same, that's about it same my, as me, man. <laughs> my blade can't touch the floor before I go out there so I keep it upside down Mm -hmm. Got the same things, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, good good players. <laughs> These Mississippi guys. Yeah, it's weird. It's crazy. Um, and then, yeah, for me, it's the same thing. Like what he said, it varies on day to day. Like if we win or play good, you know, I'm wearing the same suit to the game, the next or the next home game, anyways. And um, same thing. I always dress my left side before my right for some reason. It just feels more comfortable. And then, of course, we've got all our handshakes with each other before we go out. <laughs> Does anyone have like a really unique kind of handshake between two players? Uh, I think Cam and Sumi's is my favorite. When what is it? When Sumi walks up to Cam, Cam like checks him, pats him down. If he <laughs> like security, <laughs> yeah, airport security, security. check. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like that one. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Sumi's got family in. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen that today. Mm -hmm. So I actually uh, learned something about the uh, SPHL this week, that there aren't any restrictions on stick curve limits like there are in the NHL and the ECHL. So my question was going to be, uh, does anybody on the team have like a giant banana curve or anything that's just out there or strange? No. no. Not pretty well. Whatever's given to yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> They're all stock. Yeah, yeah. They all got like the standard Sackick, Backstrom, whatever curve that you get. So. That's... I didn't know that, Sean. 
Mm. Well, I thought the NHL was the same too, though. They give you. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, no, because Stan Makita yeah. used to have a banana blade, and well, he. Well, you see Ovechkin, and it's like yeah, that. Yeah, so right. I thought they switched <laughs> it too. Like uh -huh. Check, yeah, check on, on that for me. Well, Jason Spezza got penalized one time for it. Well, yeah, I know back in the day, McSorley did and right. stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I thought they switched that too. <laughs> Interesting. DJ. Obviously, the team's best chance to capture that fourth seed would be to win both games in Peoria. Um, what's it going to take to win that first game? Obviously, you know, Peoria's, they could considerably be in a very lax position since they've already clinched and, you know, will get the first pick in the playoffs. Um, well, what strategy, what, or what, overall, what's it going to take for you guys to get that first game and give yourselves a chance to win that second one? Well, obviously, um you know, Evansville just went in there also and, and beat them the first game. So, I mean, if you go into any game, you work hard, use your speed, use all the stuff, that, all the things that you have that are are good, and you just work hard. You can beat any team in this league. So, with that, with good good goaltending, and um, you know, anything can happen. But if you go there and you're lax days ago and you you're not willing to work hard and win battles. Um, you know, you can lose, you'll, you'll lose a game. So um, with, with this team, um, like I told them, I go, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you're not going to work hard, good things aren't going to happen. So um, with that, um, I would just say that hard work and, and, and winning battles, and, and we can win that game for sure, or the whole, or the both games, sorry, in the weekend. Just from their sheer location in Peoria being the absolute furthest team you could have to travel to, yeah. how horrible is it for that to be your last two games of the season? Uh, I know. When I, <laughs> when I seen that earlier in the, you know, after training camp or whatever, it is what it is. I have no control over that. I mean, it sucks, but um, it's also good to get on the road with the guys sometimes and for the guys to get away from, from home for a bit or their apartment. So maybe we'll have some fun, go up there, win two games, and you know, enjoy the 12 hour trip back and get ready for playoffs. But yeah, no, it definitely sucked. I mean, I don't want to go that far for <laughs> two games. I'm excited too. It's the first oh, full yeah. road trip that I'm going on this right. season. So I'll actually get the chance to go there and we'll broadcast on, on SPHL Live and on YouTube. But I went to college in Peoria, so it's a pretty cool opportunity for me to go back and see some family again <laughs> and some friends I, I know who are still there. Can't let the episode go by since we're playing Peoria this weekend. Is just to say that I don't think they're as good as what their record reflects. Obviously, with their schedule, so Evansville goes in there and beats them the first game. There's no doubt in my mind you guys can go in there and beat them both games. No, absolutely. Um, thank you for that, and I, I think we can too. So um, it's going to be it's going to be a pretty good weekend. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a team that I we should want to play. You know what I mean? Going into playoffs and kind of get a gauge and see where we're at as a team. So um, I'm excited. Uh, this one's for Alex. Um, playoff ticket wise, what, what will the pricing be? Or can fans, you know, can they purchase them in the box office for the, you know, before the game or what's um, the deal? Yeah, so that's a good question. Tickets are gonna go on sale the day after um, the, not the watch party, but that Sunday when the seatings or the matchups are determined, the selection show, tickets are going to go on sale the following Monday morning, and they can be purchased by calling the Mayhem office, 478-803-1592. Uh, we're, uh, you know, Tyler and Colin and I, we're all bracing ourselves. We know it's going to be a lot, but we also want to make the process as easy as possible for our fans uh, to get their seats that they want. So, so no general admission? It, it'll be, no, it'll be general admission. Um, okay. No, for, for the most... Precise details, I'd recommend asking Tyler, our director of ticketing. Yeah. But it'll be general admission seating, just like always. I, I don't know if the price they're going to raise or drop or stay the same. That, that's a little bit premature, I think, right now. But um, I do know that they're going to go on sale that Monday. I think that's April 7th or 8th. 8th, thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you guys familiar with the EA Sports NHL hockey games? Ooh, this one again. Yeah. This, so is, my, this is my favorite week, question. Last week I asked uh, 
Caesars and RTs, um, what their highest and lowest rated at you, attributes were, but I'm going to ask you a different one. I'm going to ask you to rate uh, some off-ice attributes from 0 to 99 as some of your teammates. So um, <laughs> <laughs> what would you say uh, Ian Silva's chirping rating uh, would be? <laughs> it depends if he's heated or if he's just, <laughs> he's just walked in the room. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It really depends. If he, and if he's not playing, he chirps a lot too. Yeah. Then maybe like eighty-five. Quality of chirps. Yeah, quality is not the highest. Yeah, but qual give me give me an average quality. Uh, one I'll, I'll give him a forty because he put his heart <laughs> he puts his heart into every one. <laughs> nice. But the content isn't the greatest. <laughs> it's the thought that counts. That's a good question. Yeah. And uh, one more, um, one to ninety-nine. What is uh, John Seamer's tape uh, stick tape job rating? Sixty-five. <laughs> <laughs> good number. I like it. It's like a Jamie Ben. <laughs> Do you guys want to guess what coach coach answered this question last week? He had a strongest and a weakest. Attribute. Oh, Do you guys yeah, care to I guess played. what his strongest and what his weakest attributes are from when he played in his prime? S strongest attribute? Yeah. Uh, skating? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, nailed skating it. Skating speed, yeah. 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 What's my worst? Yeah. yeah. This is the big one. It's okay, man. Defense? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that was bad. That was bad today. Cupper, any that ideas? Good I have no idea. Man. No. Discipline. Discipline. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Discipline would be in the low 60s. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> Coach, we have the, um, the pucks with Mac on them. Is there any way that you could bring back a couple of their game pucks of Peoria yeah because I need some new targets out of my shooting range okay yeah I can try to get that for you how many do you need many as you could get <laughs> <All right. laughs> I don't think they're gonna give yeah I don't think they're gonna give me like a box of them but I'll try to grab a couple for you for sure I got you just remind me though like yeah send me a text or something <laughs> Okay, sweet one from the heart here. <laughs> For all of you up there, including Alex, because I know you played, what, um, yeah, I asked your girlfriend, it's confirmed. <laughs> what is your favorite part of just playing hockey? That's a good question. Who wants to start? Oh, all right. players, players okay. should start. Yeah. Right. Um, that's a good question. Just being out there, like a being able to forget about anything else while you're playing the game is probably the best thing about it. Well, there's a lot of really good things about it, but that really stands out, I feel like. Um, I would say the competitive aspect. I've always been a kind of pretty competitive person, so I think being out there lets me, you know, be as competitive as I want and not have to worry about feeling bad for the other people. Yeah, I'd say both of what they said, <laughs> pretty much. No, it's like, just when I was a kid, too. It was something where, you know, I, I put on a pair of skates at, like, three years old or something, and it was just something that I would do literally eight, ten hours a day. I'd even go all by myself and just skate around, and that's never, like, left my body at all, and I'm, like, 30, 37 now. You know what I mean? So I just had that love for the game, and it hasn't left, so. I don't know, I'd probably have to say just being a part of something that's bigger than yourself. That, you know, that sounds kind of corny, but <laughs> you know, being uh, just part of a team and um, surrounded by a group of guys who you consider family, who kind of share a similar goal to you. Almost made it through the whole thing, and nobody's commented on Kevin Entman's goaling, uh, keeping again. His goaltending, yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just wondering. I mean, uh, there's some some people out there in the, in the fan site and people that talk comparing him to previous great goalies that we've had. What's your impression of of that, Coach? Oh, he's definitely played played pretty well. Yeah. Um, 
he came in, you know, obviously as a college kid, and he looks, he has that poise. He looks like he's played pro for for a long time. So when a kid comes in like that, um, you kind of know he's got something special too. And um, we're gonna ride him out here. I obviously signed him, so he's here for the for the rest of the playoffs. And um, I'm glad that I got him to make it when I did. And uh, but overall, yeah, he's he's played well for us. He's played really. Really great, you know, Knoxville, he had another 30, 40 shots on him, and what do you have, 38 saves or whatever, two, two goals again. So um, now he's playing well, and hopefully he continues to do that uh, for us here in the next stretch. So. What's that? Oh, I know. <laughs> that too, that's what I mean, it works. That's how it works sometimes, you know. That's why you got to always be on the ball and make sure when college is uh, ending, you're... You're on the phone trying to find those pieces that you need, and Kevin's definitely one that stepped in and, and helped us out here. So, yeah. For those of you who don't know this, he's actually um, incredibly consistent. When he was at Adrian College, he rarely missed a game. He was there for four seasons. He was, you know, basically their go-to guy almost the entire time from freshman to senior year. Um, so that could bode well for us, you know, in the future. No, absolutely. And the thing, too, is, you know, in college, you don't play a ton of games. So I think right now he's probably at that part of his where his body's not breaking down. He's probably can play another 30, 40 games right now. So that's huge, mm -hmm. too. This is for Chris Stapps. I have to be the mama. How's your knee doing? <laughs> it's good. It's good? Yeah. Good. <laughs> that was sweet. We haven't gotten a question like that. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys, anything else? Good questions. Melissa. I've asked this a uh, number of times now. So if this starts to happen, I'm going to take at least a little bit of credit, but what are some of the pranks that are going on? Because I've heard that there really aren't too many, but maybe uh, it's Nothing's starting to changed. increase now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed. Yeah, there, Not that I there, see. there could be more. There could yeah. be more? Yeah. You got some ideas up your sleeve? Uh, maybe. You'll get the guys in playoffs? <laughs> yeah. We got, we got to look. It's crazy because new guys come up all the time, and I say the same thing, that we have no pranksters, man. And, you know, when I played, there was pranks every, every day. You know what I mean? So... Maybe you two guys get some going. They'll lighten stuff up sometimes too. We, stuff's ready. We, <laughs> what's that? No, we have a great group. Our group's great. Like we have a good group. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, but not the pranks, man. The pranks are, no, it's a hockey thing. It's been around the game since day one, right? So you always got to have some kind of good pranks going on. We got Blair pretty good on April Fools actually Did yesterday. It? Yeah, we. What, what, tell yeah, us about that. Okay, so there's you know our ceilings that are their tiles basically, so you can like push them up and, and slide them over. And Tyler had this little cheap like phone Bluetooth speaker thing, and I went and stood on top of a chair and put the the, the Bluetooth speaker like over his vent, closed it back up so you couldn't tell, and Tyler started playing like this really eerie, creepy whispering on on YouTube. So. For hours, Blair was just like on the phone in his office, hearing this creepy, eerie whispering going on, like coming from the vent, and he couldn't figure out where it was coming from, but he knew we were messing with him. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the front office has some more pranks. Like the guys yeah. need to learn something yeah. here. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> well, you're going on the road trip, Alex. So uh, this is your big shot. Exactly. Yeah, it's my time to shine. <laughs> we actually we did think about getting the guys downstairs. We thought a lot of you guys probably would have been going, been going nuts trying to figure out what that was. Yeah. Who do you think would have freaked out the most with something like that? Wow. Any of you guys can answer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Well, he's yeah, up there. Be. Yeah, he's up there. Probably. Yeah. That's a yeah. good one. Silvis too, maybe. Nah, yeah. Yeah, maybe. I think Cam might as well. Cam, yeah. 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 <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> maybe we should get it going we'll in the it, house. Yeah, we'll try it later. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll give it a test run at the house. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he's not listening. Uh, no, yeah. All right. Anything else? <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, well, we're going to move on to our last segment of the show. We're just going to preview the weekend. Um, 
Coach, uh, the points coming up this weekend are equally critical to uh, what they were this past weekend. The Mayhem need at least one win to uh, get home ice advantage, and they'll also need some help from Pensacola and Knoxville. Um, what is the importance to you and to this group of having home ice advantage in the first round of the postseason? Oh, no, it's huge. Um, as you can see, the last month and a half or so, how our, our fans have been, our attendance has been up, and um, our building's really loud. You know, once, once you get 1,000, 2,000 people in there, you know, our guys feed off that, and um, that'd be nice to, you know, to start the playoffs and have home ice for sure. Um, you know, it's up to us, though. We can't wait for Penty to help us. We got to go to Peoria and do our job, do the job that we need to do and, and get it done. Yeah, and, and DJ sort of alluded to this earlier. Peoria isn't exactly playing for anything this weekend. Um, they're not in the same boat the Mayhem are in terms of the importance of these points. Do you foresee any potential lack of motivation on their end and um, possibly any way the Mayhem might be able to capitalize on it? Um, not with John Gee as your coach. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's, he still have pride to play for. You know, you want to you wanna win out. They want to go into playoffs on, on a high note, too, and have right. that momentum. So I don't think they're just going to shut it down for us. But um, you never know. He could rest some guys, maybe. I don't know yeah. what, what he's going to do for sure. But um, I don't see him just, oh, here, here's four points. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So we got a job to do there and um, worry about ourselves, like I said, and go there and, and play, play the right way for these two games leading into the playoffs. All right, well, we're going to close the show up now. The last question I'm going to have is, uh, as always, is going to be for you guys, a trivia question. Um, whoever can answer the question correctly will get a signed autographed puck from these two gentlemen. Um, the question is this. What is Jarrett Cup's college team's color? <laughs> They've been too easy before. You guys have been nailing it left and right. Thought I'd throw out a challenging question this time. Yes, sir. No. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to keep guessing, though. Somebody will get it eventually. <laughs> no. No. Who said purple? She did back there. Oh, yeah, Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> you won. <laughs> She's only here for half the show, but she... <laughs> All right, congratulations. And again, thanks for coming out, guys, and uh, enjoying our eighth episode of Line Change. Hope you've enjoyed your meals, and we hope to see you again next week. Thank you. Yes, sir.